And once again, welcome back. We're here with Heather Oppenheimer Smith, the infection prevention nurse at Fort Madison Community Hospital, answering your questions. Here's another one that has come in from Natalie Adalma. She asked on our Facebook page, I've heard many people think Lee County isn't testing many people. Could you go over the testing process or at least the criteria a person has to meet in order to be tested? We utilize the state hygienic lab testing criteria, which is the state lab in Iowa. And the recommendations, which are consistent with the CDC recommendations, are to test hospitalized patients that have symptoms that are consistent with COVID, to test older or immune compromised patients with the same type of symptoms, patients who are from a congregate living setting, and healthcare workers who potentially have been exposed or are sick. And talk about how health healthcare workers are, are tested. They fall they first in line to get tested so they can get back to work. How's that process work at the hospital? For us, it depends on um, how the employee presents, if they are willing to be tested or not, and um, how quickly that's going to get them back to work depending on when their symptom onset was. All right, we have another question in from our Facebook page from Savannah Strunk. She asks, I have seen many people wearing gloves in essential businesses and general public. Is this helpful in keeping the virus from spreading? Can wearing gloves be helpful or if used properly? What is the proper procedure? If they're used properly, they can be helpful. The problem that we see occur frequently in the public is that people don't use them correctly. Gloves are designed to reduce contamination, and so you put them on, do the contaminated task, take them off, perform hand hygiene. And a lot of times out in the community, if people put them on and then just wear them like all the way through a grocery store, for example, they may touch their phone, they may touch their purse, they touch lots of different items throughout the store. And if they don't do good hand hygiene following glove wearing, the gloves are basically negating the entire point of wearing them. And a lot of the supermarkets I understand in our area are having a problem with a lot of used gloves and masks ending up in their parking lots. Talk about proper disposal and the, and the importance of that. They should absolutely go into um, a regular garbage bin. Anything that's potentially contaminated with COVID can, for the most part, go in regular garbage. Um, usually there is a bin outside of most grocery stores. It's important to make sure you're washing your hands after you dispose of them. And then anybody picking them up should, of course, be wearing some kind of barrier protection or using some kind of device to pick them up. All right, very good. We also have another question in from Kyla Yates. She writes on our WGM Facebook page. There are many rural areas that are not testing still. If these patients are seen and have symptoms and told to self isolate, but not tested, are they being considered positive in the numbers for state statistics? They are not being considered positive in the numbers for state statistics. However, that goes back to the guidance from the Iowa Department of Public Health to say, consider that we have community spread in our area starting a couple weeks ago. So everybody should be following the precautions that they were directed to follow to start with. All right, we also have another question on our WGM Facebook page from Clara Beth Hanna. Should a person who has Cushing's disease and is diabetic who is in their 30s need to be in quarantine? Well, there's a difference between quarantine and self-isolating. Um, quarantine is you're sick and you're told to stay home. Self-isolating is you're avoiding going out in the public and having an exposure. It would be appropriate for that individual to avoid having an exposure because they would potentially be at an increased risk if they were to become ill. All right, and Norma Claire also sent in a question to us at our news at WGEM uh, email. She asked if there is a determination about COVID-19, if there is a test to determine if you've had COVID-19. I know someone who has had horrible body aches, headache, 100.3 degree temperature, but no breathing difficulty. There are some blood tests that are coming out that can determine if you have had the illness or if you actively have the illness. Those aren't readily available in our area. Depending on if the person um, has the fever and hasn't had any other symptoms, if they meet any kind of testing criteria for the region that they live in, they may potentially be tested and could possibly be positive or negative using the nasal swab that is commonly available here in the Midwest. Heather, we hear so much about uh, flattening that curve and the importance of social distancing. Touch on those points a little bit. Are we getting the word out again to the populace in Iowa and throughout the tri-states about the importance of social distancing? I think that we are trying really hard. I don't know that it's being received across 
all of the areas of the community. But we have our providers from the health system, both Great River and Fort Madison, doing public service videos, talking about flattening the curve and keeping people at home unless they need to go out for essential trips. And we've really tried to share all of the things from the Department of Public Health, indicating that people should stay home unless it's necessary to travel. And we hope we are getting that information out. All right, we appreciate that. That's all of our time for this broadcast. Our conversation with Heather will continue until 7 p.m. on News Talk 105 WGEM and our WGEM FM mobile app as well. We thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm Tony Cornish Jr. We'll see you all later on this evening on WGM News at, at 10. Until then, stay safe, Tri-States.